So mankind's enemy continued his crimes, killing as often as he could, coming alone, bloodthirsty, and horrible. Though he lived in Herat, when the night hit him, he never dared to touch King Hrothgar's glorious throne, protected by God, God whose love Grendel could not know. But Hrothgar's heart was bent. The best and most noble of his council debated remedies sat in secret sessions talking of terror and wondering what the bravest of warriors could do. And sometimes they sacrificed to the old stone gods, made heathen vows, hoping for hell's support, the devil's guidance, and driving their affliction off. That was their way, in the heathen's only hope. Hell always in their hearts, knowing neither God nor his passing as he walks through our world, the Lord of heaven and earth. Their ears could not hear his praise, nor know his glory. Let them beware. Those who are thrust into danger, clutched at by trouble, yet carry no solace in their hearts, cannot hope to be better. Hail to those who arise to God, drop off their dead bodies, and seek our Father's peace. Beowulf So the living sorrow of Hilfstein's son simmered, bitter and fresh, and no wisdom or strength could break it. That agony hung on king and people alike, harsh and unending, violent and cruel and evil. In his far-off home, Beowulf, Higlock's follower, and the strongest of the Geats, greater and stronger than anyone anywhere in this world, heard how Grendel filled knights with horror, and quickly commanded a boat fitted out, proclaiming that he'd go to that famous king, would sail across the sea to Hrothgar, now when help was needed. None of the wise ones regretted his going. Much as he was loved by the Geats, the almonds were good, and they urged the adventure on. So Beowulf chose the mightiest men he could find, the bravest and best of the Geats, fourteen in all, and led them down to their boat. He knew the sea would point the prow straight to that distant Danish shore. Beowulf and his men sailed over the sea to the land of the Danes to offer help to Hrothgar. They were escorted by a Danish guard to Herat, where Wolfgar, one of the Hrothgar soldiers, tells the king of their arrival. Hrothgar knows a Beowulf and is ready to welcome the young prince's men. Then Wolfgar went to the door and addressed the waiting seafarers with soldiers' words. My lord, the great king of the Danes commands me to tell you that he knows of your noble birth and that having to come to him from over the open sea, you have come bravely and are welcome. Now go to him as you are, in your armor and helmets, but leave your battle shields here, and your spears. Let them lie, waiting for the promises your words may make. Beowulf arose, with his men around him, ordering a few to remain with their weapons, leading the others quickly along under Herod's steep roof, into Hrothgar's presence, standing on that prince's own hearth, helmeted, the silvery metal of his mail shirt, gleaming with a smith's high art, he greeted the Dane's great lord. Hail Hrothgar! Higlock is my cousin and my king. The days of my youth have been filled with glory. Now Grendel's name has echoed in our land. Sailors have brought us stories of Herot, the great of all meat halls, deserted and useless when the moon hangs in skies the sun had lit. Light and life fleeing together, my people have said, the wisest, most knowing, and best of them, that my duty was to go to the Danes' great king. They have seen my strength for themselves, have watched me rise from the darkness of war, dripping with my enemy's blood. I drove five great giants into chains, chased all of that race from the earth. I swam in the blackness of night hunting monsters out of the ocean, and killing them one by one. Death was my errand, and the fate they had earned. Now Grendel and I are called together, and I've come. Grant me then, Lord and Protector of this noble place, a single request. I have come so far, O shelterer of warriors and your people's loved friend, that this one favor you should not refuse me, that I, alone and with the help of my men, may purge all evil from this hall. 
I have heard, too, that their monster's scorn of men is so great that he needs no weapons and fears none. Nor will I, my lord Higlock, might think less of me if I let my sword go where my feet were afraid to. If I hid behind some broad linden shield, my hands alone shall fight for me, struggle for life against the monster. God must decide who will be given to death's cold grip. Grendel's plan, I think, will be what it has been before, to invade this hall and gorge his belly with our bodies. If he can, if he can. And I think, if my time will have come, there will be nothing to mourn over, no corpse to prepare for its grave. Grendel will carry our body flesh to the moors, crunching on our bones and smear torn scrapes of our skin on the walls of his den. No, I expect no Danes will fret about sewing our shrouds. If he wins and if death does take me, send the hammered mail of my armor to Higlock. Return the inheritance I had from Hrethel and he from Wayland. Fate will unwind as it must. Hrothgar replied, protector of the Danes. Beowulf, you've come to us in friendship, and because of the reception where your father found at our court, Edstow had begun a bitter feud, killing Hlathleth, a wolfling warrior. Your father's countrymen were afraid of war. If he returned to his home and they returned him away, then he'd travel across the curving waves to the land of the Danes. I was new to the throne. Then, a young man ruling this wide kingdom, and its golden city, Hergar, my oldest brother, a far better man than I, had died and dying made me second among Heathdane's sons. First in this nation, I bought the end of Edstow's quarrel, sent ancient treasures through the ocean's furrows to the wolfings. Your father swore he'd keep that peace. My tongue grows heavy, and my heart... When I try to tell you what Grendel has brought us, the damage he's done here in this hall, you see for yourself how much smaller our ranks have become, and can guess what we've lost to his terror. Surely the Lord Almighty could stop his madness, smother his lust. How many times have my men, glowing with courage, drawn from too many cups of ale, sworn to stay after dark, and stem that horror with a sweep of their swords. And then, in the morning, this meat hall glittering with new light would be drenched with blood. The benches stained red, the floors all wet from that fiend's savage assault, and my soldiers would be fewer still, death taking more and more. But to table, Beowulf, a banquet in your honor. Let us toast your victories and talk of the future. Then Hrothgar's men gave places to the Geats, yielded benches to the brave visitors, and led them to the feast. The keeper of the mead came carrying out the carved flasks and poured that bright sweetness. A poet sang from time to time. In a clear, pure voice, Danes and visiting Geats celebrated as one drank and rejoiced.